I get this question all the time, what are your favorite slasher movies? I'm going to tell you what my favorite slasher movies are. What's up guys, welcome to another Drum Dumbs Top 10. I always love doing Top 10s. You guys seem to like them too. Um, this is the slasher movie book. Uh, this book is really expensive now. It's out of print. But I figured since I'm talking about slashers, I'd show you this book. It's uh, it's it's by J.A. Kurzweil. Uh, mine still looks like it's in great condition. I've had it for probably like five years now. And uh, but yeah, I mean, if let me let me show you. Like if you look there, you can see all the slashers that are talked about in this book. It's just insane. So if you guys can ever get lucky enough to find this thing anywhere, be sure. Oh, there's Halloween right there. Hold on. Oh, there's the burning. Yeah, the burning. So yeah, if you guys can ever find the slasher movie book, be sure to find it. A few of my subscribers have actually bought this because I talked about it in previous videos. So I'm gonna put that up now. But here we go, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Now, first off, this is my list. It's not your list. And I haven't seen every slasher. I mean, if you look through that book, there are literally hundreds of slasher movies. Uh, so I haven't seen them all. So I know I'm gonna miss some, uh, like The Prowler. I've never seen The Prowler. I want to, I really want to, but I haven't seen it yet. So also before I get into this, you see I'm wearing a certain slasher shirt right here. This is Michael Myers. This is the We Are Michael Myers t-shirt from Killer Flicks, my Facebook group. Uh, we had this shirt designed. We Bowen designed it. And uh, if you want one, you can actually get it at the Drum Dumb store. I'll post a link right here and there'll be a link in the info box. Now, onto the countdown. Now, first off, I'm gonna give you two quick honorable mentions just because I had to mention these two movies. Uh, the first honorable mention is Halloween 4. Halloween 4 is the movie that made me obsessed with the Halloween franchise. It's the movie that really scared the crap out of me. It's one of the few movies, you know, because horror fans, we don't really get scared that often. We just like to rush. But Halloween 4 is one of the few that literally just like shook my foundations. And so I had to mention it. That movie is just insane. And obviously because the original Halloween might be on this list, but the ending of Halloween 4 is like one of the creepiest endings I've ever seen. And most shocking, like I did not expect that. And my next honorable mention is gonna be My Bloody Valentine. And this movie's great. Uh, it just didn't make my top 10. But you know, after Halloween, every holiday uh, was not safe. They had to make a, a slasher movie out of whatever holiday was, was around. And My Bloody Valentine is one of the better ones, actually, because it's kind of a blue collar slasher. It's setting in like a mining town. And uh, I love the look of the, the killer uh, with the, the gas mask. It's okay, so here we go. Number 10 is gonna be Psycho. The original Psycho is probably the most influential uh, slasher movie ever. Uh, and I do have a few classics on here that like are back in that era. And uh, this one is definitely one of the most popular. And what's funny is I didn't even see Psycho until after I saw Psycho 2. And when I went back and watched Psycho, I loved it. it. Norman Bates is one of the greatest and most interesting characters ever put to screen. And he's a big reason why Psycho works so well. And Alfred Hitchcock is uh, an even bigger reason why the movie works so well because his directing in that and the, the iconic shower scene that's still like so effective this day, like a lot of people are afraid to take showers because of Psycho. Number nine is gonna be a Friday the 13th movie, Friday the 13th part four. This was tough because there's there's a, a few really good Friday movies, uh, but I think out of all of them, part four, I think gets it right on every single level. This movie is like the perfect slasher movie. This is when Jason was at his most lethal and scary. And Ted White was such a great Jason. And that final act with Trish and Tommy Jarvis and the machete going into Jason's head. Oh, I just love this movie so much. It, most Friday movies are like a B movie, but I think Friday Part 4 is like an A movie. And, and the uh, Chris Glover dance. Number eight is going to be A Nightmare on Elm Street. Now, this one probably should be higher on the list. It's just there's so many great, phenomenal slashers out there that it was really hard for me to arrange these. And don't take the, the, the number in this list like to heart because most of these movies I love all the same. But Nightmare on Elm Street definitely deserves to be in my top 10. Freddy Krueger is one of the big three and he's one of the big three for a great reason. He's so uh, interesting. 
And everybody can relate to going to sleep and having nightmares, and why not capitalize on that? And Robert England plays Freddy to perfection, and you know I think that's a big reason why the remake didn't do so well, even though I do like that movie. I think to try to copy what Robert England did, even if you do a, a different version of the character like Jackie O'Reilly did, you're setting yourself up for failure because he, he nailed it, he was perfect. And I love Heather Langenkamp in this role. At the end when they're doing the, the booby traps, really Home Alone copies Nightmare on Elm Street if you think about it. Uh, just such a fun ride. Number seven is going to be Black Christmas. Black Christmas really is one of the first that started the slasher craze as we know it today. But it wasn't really, like Halloween was really the one that like kicked the doors open. But Black Christmas, uh, was very similar to Halloween as far as a template goes. And I don't think it got its comeuppance until, uh, you know, in the 2000s, everybody just started talking about Black Christmas again. And it's just a beautifully done movie by Bob Clark. Uh, I think Billy is one of the most interesting slasher characters ever put to screen because you don't really know much about him at all. Uh, you don't even see him at all. All you see is like his eye. And uh, the Christmas music is so creepy in this movie. And I think it just works so well because it's so cold too. Like the, the whole movie feels like it's just the dead of winter. And you know, I love wintry horror movies. So Black Christmas is phenomenal. And it had to make the list. Number six is a movie that I recently just reviewed. As a matter of fact, it was my last review, I think. And it's a movie that I had never seen before. It's called Bay of Blood, directed by Mario Bava. Also known as Twitch of the Death Nerve. This movie, uh, immediately captivated me because of the kills. The kills are just so brutal. And this movie was made in 1971. And you really don't care about all the twists and turns that happens in it. You really just love the kills. I love the way that uh, Mario Bava directs this thing, how there's uh, a lot of camera zoom ins and zoom outs. But the one scene especially is when the, the girl is running from the bay and he uh, hooks her with the bill hook and like rips her neck apart and it's just, brutal but yeah if you haven't seen Bay of Blood do yourself a favor definitely check it out it's worth buying it's it's great and it's one of the first slashers uh, as we know them today number five is gonna be Scream how could you not put Scream on this list the movie alone revitalized the slasher genre the, the genre was all but dead and then Scream comes along and just breathes new life into it and it pays uh, homage to the slasher movies before it, especially Halloween, actually. But <clears throat> Ghostface was such an interesting killer because he could be anybody. And you had this really fresh and hip cast throughout the whole thing. And it's one of the few movies like set in like the 90s and 2000s that I think works like flawlessly. Because a lot of times, especially in the cell phone age, I think that's a big reason why the, the slasher movies don't work as well. And this one did have cell phones in it, but it's one of the few that really gets it right because the cell phones actually have a purpose in the movie. Number four is another Jallo film, Tenebrae. Uh, and this is a movie that I recently discovered in the last year. Uh, big shout out to Dylan Clancy for recommending this one to me, but Tenebrae, just the visual style of this movie just knocked my socks off. Dario Argento immediately jumped into my, like my top three favorite horror directors. Uh, and it was so refreshing because even though this movie was made in like the early 80s, I'd never seen any slasher like it before. And it made me want to uh, research more of his movies and I watched Suspiria after. But uh, Tenebrae, the music, the score in this movie is so well done. The directing is so well done. Everything's just beautiful. And I think one of my favorite scenes is when the girl is running from the dog just because of how realistic it looked and, and how, you know, she really looked like she was in danger in that scene. So. Uh, another one that I highly recommend, Tenebrae. Number three is gonna be a camp slasher, The Burning. The number one reason why The Burning is in my top three is because it has one of the most gruesome kills I've ever seen on screen in a slasher movie, and that is the raft scene. Tom Savini, the work he did on that scene is like exactly what you would want in a kill scene in a slasher movie. It doesn't hold back at all, and it looks real. And it's just a blood fest. So that scene alone gets this gets this movie in my top three. And Cropsey is an interesting killer. I actually said in my review that I wasn't like 
completely captivated by Cropsey, but it's one of those movies that stays with you, and now I love Cropsey as a killer, and I'm surprised they never made a sequel to The Burning. Number two is gonna be Sleepaway Camp. I just literally, right before this, reviewed or re-reviewed Sleepaway Camp, and Sleepaway Camp gets in my top two because of how unique it is and how um, like awkward and wrong it feels. And of, of course, that ending. That ending is like the greatest horror ending I think I've ever seen put to screen it, because of how shocking it is. And I loved that the characters in this movie were just kids. They really were kids. And yet they were saying these like horrible things. And then you had this relationship between like a teenager and a freaking 70 year old guy. All this stuff was just came together to make the perfect slasher movie and the most unique and original slasher movies I've ever seen. So yeah, Sleepaway Camp. And number one, no surprise here, John Carpenter's Halloween. Wow, what else can I say about Halloween? I've reviewed the movie twice, I've talked to it ad nauseum a million times. You know why it's great. Halloween 2018 is coming out this year. But to be blunt about it, John Carpenter, uh, the killer, Michael Myers, the perfect uh, final girl, Jamie Lee Curtis. I mean, it's this is the perfect storm of slasher movies. It's everything coming together to make the perfect horror movie. That's what Halloween is. It gets more and more popular every single year. We will never stop talking about Halloween. Um, I'm predicting that this new movie is going to like make in the first week more than any other Halloween movie has ever made just because of how popular this franchise is and how it keeps growing, even on killer flicks. It's the number one thing people talk about is Halloween, and then the other thing people talk about is how they're sick of talking about Halloween. So anyway, that's it. That's my top 10 favorite slasher movies of all time. I'm sure I probably forgot a couple that I, ha I have seen. So post your favorites down in the comments below. Let me know what you like. Also, come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and on Fridays we do Free For Fridays. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Follow me at Drum Dums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and now Stardust. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and Drum Dum out.